Good morning, One Name Church family. So glad that you're tuning in today online, hanging out with us. And we're so excited about this November. And it's November 1st, and we're excited because we got two months left of the year, and we're going to make it the best two months. And we're in this new series. We're starting it today, and it's called Family is Our Priority. And we believe here at One Name Church that family is our priority and we want to partner with you to build a strong family because we believe if you have a strong family, it'll produce strong individuals, it'll produce a strong you, and then you will be able to go out and produce into the world and live out the kingdom because it starts in the home and especially in a season where we've been stuck in the home and the enemy is, is, is coming at, after us and our families and it's a lot of tension, a lot of stress. This is a season for us to dig in and see what God says about our families. And we're excited to, to be in this series. We're gonna take the whole month of November and we're gonna talk about it and different ways of how we can make family our priority, what the Bible says about it, what, what God says about it. And we're going to help build healthy families here. And we're not perfect, me and my wife. You know, we're learning. Um, but we, that's why we dive into the word of God. Um, as you can see in the welcome, it's just craziness in our house with a two-year-old. But we, we, we're just learning and we, we, we want to learn today and we want to dive into the word of God and see what he says. So if you have your Bible, we're going to start right off. And I want to go into a scripture in Joshua. And this is in the Old Testament, and Joshua, he, he's in uh, his place, and they're, they're fighting. And what Joshua says is very clear of how we need to lead our families, how we need to be a good family member, because it's not just about leading our families. We have to be a great family member as well in order for us to make family our priority and build healthy families. And I love how Joshua says this. He makes a statement, and he chooses right here in this verse, what him and his family will be doing. And if you have your Bible, turn with me. I'm going to read out of the NLT version. It'll be right here on my TV, and I love this. And it says this. It says this in Joshua 24, verse 15. It says, but if you refuse, he's talking to the, to the people of God, to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But, as we talked about last week, I love there's so, so many buts in the Bible because he's, he's breaking this down for people. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And I, I wanna take out of that scripture that last part but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. See, I titled this message today, We Will. We Will. And as we think about making family our priority and building a healthy family, it starts with those two words, We Will. And I think most of the time we're, we're in a family, I don't know what your family situation is and how you grow, grew up and uh, what, what how your family looks like. And there's so many dynamics to family. But I do know one thing, and God says it in his scriptures. And Joshua kind of brings it out. He brings it out and says this, we will serve the Lord. And if we want to build healthy families, if we want to uh, be a good family member, if we want to make family our priority, we have to say these two words, we will, and then the next part, serve the Lord. We have to choose today to make God the foundation of our families. Because we're in a fight. Like we've been talking about faith and all of this season and we've been talking about all these things and the enemy wants to come at the family structure. He wants to come at the home. He wants to divide the home. He wants people in the home saying, I will. I will do this. He doesn't want the unity in the home to be, be we will serve the Lord. And he tries to divide and he tries to uh, uh, 
distract and, and put family members at each other. But just like Joshua said, he said, we will serve the Lord. We have to make a decision that we will serve the Lord in our families. Because if we're not willing to make that our foundation, then the world will come in and he will, and the, and the enemy will come in and distract our families and, dis, and lead our families astray and try to divide our families. We have to be willing to say we will serve the Lord. See, I grew up uh, in a home. We went to church all the time. And that wasn't the main thing I learned from my parents and, and our family. But the one thing I, I, I knew that I couldn't argue, because I'm, I'm a good arguer. I love to negotiate my way. I don't, I don't like to be quiet. I guess that's why I'm a preacher. I like to talk a lot. And I like to always get the last word. I've learned this. I've had to learn self-control over my life. And I'm learning it in my marriage. Um, but growing up, there's one thing I couldn't negotiate. And that was serving the Lord. And I tried. I tried to say this excuse. I tried to do this and have this and have all these excuses of why I couldn't serve the Lord. But I remember vividly conversations in times when I was growing up where my parents said, we will serve the Lord. We will go to church. We will live by the Spirit. We will give to the church. We will love our neighbor as ourselves. And they started to instill these things into me. And even though I rebelled, even though I didn't want to do that, I was like, well, why? And uh, they made sure and stood firm that their foundation was in Christ, that our family is built on Jesus and our family will serve the Lord. And I believe if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that persistence, because it takes persistence as a parent, come on. If it wasn't for that, that, that grit to make sure to say this is a non-negotiable, this is something that we will not uh, discuss or negotiate about, this is what we're doing. And it's because of that I am where I'm at today. I am serving the Lord and I'm trying to be that example for my family because my parents made a decision that we will serve the Lord. And I think the same is true for your life. No matter what, what the family you've gone through, maybe your, your, your family hasn't served the Lord. Maybe you're, uh, you have poor leadership in your family or your dad has left you, your mom has left you, or you're a single mom and, and all of these dynamics. But the good news is this, that no matter what your past, today we can make a decision for our families to serve the Lord. We can say, we will do this. We can come in today, no matter what the past, no matter what the family situation looks like and say, we will make family our priority today and we will serve the Lord. Because if we don't start now with ourselves saying we will serve the Lord and, and doing that and, and, and instilling that into our family, the devil's going to come in and life and the world's going to come in and it's going to lead our family astray. We have to be willing to say, I will build my foundation. I will build my family's foundation on Jesus. See, we're in a fight for our families this season, and we have to choose today, like Joshua says, who we serve. We will serve the Lord. We will make God number one and family number two. See, I believe wholeheartedly in my heart that sometimes in life, or most of the times in life, we get our priorities mixed up. And this is why our families get sacrificed on the altar of certain things in our life. Maybe it's sacrifice on the altar of the job. Like we're not giving enough time to our family. We were giving it more to the job. And it, it's not God, family. It's God, job, everything else, blah, 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 and then family. We have to get our priorities straight if we want to build healthy families. We got to make family our priority. Family has to be number two. Because God built the family. God designed our families to serve him. He put in a structure. And if we want to win this fight for our families, we must take a stand like Joshua and say, we will serve the Lord. And we will make family our priority. We will serve God with everything we have. But then we will make family 
the second most important thing. Because when we do that, that is when our legacy lives on. That is when uh, uh, we start to make a difference in our kids and our family's life. And I believe that we can do that. But we have to choose today to build our foundation on, G- on Jesus, build our family's foundation on Jesus. Matthew 7 says this, I love it, because Jesus is talking about foundation and we can apply this to our family today. It says this, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes and torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, he goes on to say it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears the teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on the sand. When the rain and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. See, Jesus, he's painting the picture about the word of God, about having the foundation and hearing what he says and actually building on what he says, on the word, on who he is and his foundation. And he says, if we build it on what the world says and all of these things and things that change here and there, if we build it on sand, we will fail. But if we build it on him, if we build it on the rock, if we build it on the cornerstone, if we build it on him, we will have a strong foundation. And no matter what storm comes in our family's life, in our life, we can have a foundation that is so deep in Jesus that when storms come, it unifies our families. When a season like COVID comes, it it brings us together. It doesn't divide us. And I think in this season, our families are being tested to see where the the foundation of our families are. And is it in Christ or was it in everything else? Is it in the world or is it in Jesus? And 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 I believe if we want to make family our priority, if we want to build healthy families, we have to build our family's foundation on Jesus. We have to say today is the day. Today is the day that we will serve the Lord and we will not make an exception to this. No matter what happens, we will serve the Lord. Making your family your priority, our priority starts with us building our family's foundation on Jesus. If we don't build the foundation in our house, the world will build it for you. If you don't build it in your house for your family, the world will build it for you. See, every time I was going through something in life, my parents, and I'm always going to go back to them because I believe they raised me really well. You'll get to meet them later on in the series. But my parents, they always said, if you are struggling with something, come to me. They had this grace They had this love that even though I might be messing up and I'm like, oh my gosh, if I go to them like and say this, am I going to get in trouble and am I going to do this? And they didn't lead like that. They led with grace and said, if you're struggling with something, come to me. And I think that type of grace helped me build my foundation on Jesus because I knew that I could go to them and they would help me through it and they would understand I might be going the wrong way, but they can redirect me. And it was this open grace that was given to me so that I can build my life on Jesus. And I think that is true with our families. We gotta lead with grace because if we don't lead with grace in our home, if we don't build uh, the foundation of Jesus in our home and and we don't make it a, a comfortable environment of grace, our kids, our family, they'll run to the world to find out what the answer is to their problems. And they don't need to run to the world. They need to run to Jesus. And we've talked about this at One Name Church. There's, There's only one way, there's only one truth, There's only one God. There's only one answer. His name is Jesus. And if we want our families to be healthy, if we want to make family a priority, we have to have this environment of grace to allow our families to fail and to be there like Jesus is for us, open hand and say, I'm here. What do you need? This is what we believe. This is our foundation. It's on Jesus. And all you have to do is come to me. We have to say, we will. We we will have to be a family that prays. We have to choose today. We will be a family that prays together because a family that prays together 
stays together. We will be a family that serves together because a family that serves together grows together. See, we have to make these decisions because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We have to put our roots down in our family and choose to say, this is who we will serve. This is what we believe and our family will follow because we're leading by example. God needs to be the center of our home and that can only happen when we choose to stand up and say, we will. We will serve the Lord. But we first have to understand that we're a part of God's family. If we want to lead like this and say, we will, we want to be like Joshua and put our roots down deep and say, this is our family's foundation. It's built on Christ. We have to understand that we are a part of God's family. See, when we call on the name of Jesus, we're adopted into God's family. When we are saved and we make Jesus number one in our life, we have been adopted into the family of God through the salvation in Jesus. So we have to know this is who we belong to. So if we belong to God's family, then we should model our family after the family of God. Because look what it says in Ephesians 2.19. I love this. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners. You are no longer strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Man, it puts it right there in Ephesians that we are a member of God's house. It's it's not talking about the church. It's talking about God's family. When you call on the name of Jesus, when you've been saved by Jesus, you are a part of God's house. And if we are a part of God's house, we need to fall under his authority, his uh, guidelines of how to lead a family and build the same thing that he's building his house, build it in our families. But sometimes we get it all twisted in our mind because we're like, we're struggling with our identity. Who do we belong to? And it comes off into our families and how we lead by example. But I'm here to tell you that you belong to God. You belong to God. You are a child of God. If you call on the name of Jesus, you have been saved. You are a child of God. You're a part of his family. Now we must lead our families like his family. So how do we do this? Four quick ways of how we can build our foundation, our family's foundation on Jesus and say we will serve the Lord and make a stand today that this is what we'll do so we can build healthy families, we can lead by example and make family our priority. Number one, I've been talking about it, but this is the first step that we have to do. We will make a decision to build our family's foundation on Jesus. So the first thing is this, put everything aside, all the practical things. You have to decide today that you will make a decision to build your family's foundation on Jesus. And you're like, well, maybe you're sitting there like, well, I'm not the leader of my family or I'm just a family member or I'm a child or, or you don't understand my family. It doesn't, ha- it says we will make a decision. Yes, the leadership has to come from the man and the wife and they come together, they become one, then they build their family. Yes, men have to lead out. The husband has to lead out. That's why we have problems in our society because husbands are passive. They don't want to be leaders. Men don't want to be leaders. They don't want to step up and lead their family. And and maybe the best thing they can do in life is not chase a career, but actually chase Jesus and chase being a great family person. But they don't want to do that. So yes, you might be saying, well, I, I don't have to do, but I'm not just talking about that. Yes, we have to lead our families, but you can make a decision today. You can make a decision to build your foundation on Jesus. And when you make a decision as whatever your family is, whatever whatever role you play, when you make that decision, you will start to be an example for others. Because look at what Paul says here. When we choose to build our family on Jesus, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 3. He talks about that we don't have to be the leader in order for us to build a great foundation, in order for us to uh, make a decision. Look at what he says, because he's talking about the church and he's, he's talking about how certain people use their gifts and all of this happens, but I wanna apply it to family today because I, I think the same is true, that everyone plays a role and we can choose to build our foundation on Jesus. And it says this, after all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are all God's servants through whom you believed the good news. 
Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting. Come on. Or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who, next slide, who waters work together with the same purpose and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are God's field. You are God's building. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder, Paul says. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful for no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, which is Jesus Christ. And that's a lot compact in that verse. And we can spend a whole series talking about that because Paul's talking about the church and he's speaking the Corinthian church. But I want to apply it to families today because I think the same is true in our families, that no matter where you find yourself, you don't have to be the one uh, doing this. Like, oh, well, I didn't start the family. I didn't plant the family. Well, maybe you're watering in your situation. Maybe you're saying, you know, I'm going to pour into my family. I'm going to show them Jesus. And it's how we live. You water it by laying the foundation in your life and showing your family. And maybe you are uh, the leader of the family. And you can say, today's the day I will build the foundation on Jesus that I will not, to, I will not choose to, to, to worry about what happened in the past in my family. I will let God forgive me for that and make today the day I serve the Lord and I will build my uh, foundation on Jesus. See, if we want to build healthy families, make family our priority, we have to build our families on Jesus, our foundation on Jesus. And it starts with building our own foundation on Jesus. Because if you can't lead by example in your own family, then your family's not gonna follow suit. We have to be an example when it comes to building a foundation on Jesus. You don't have to change your family overnight. You just have to choose to make a decision to build your family on Jesus. Number two, how do we do this? How do we have, have this attitude like Joshua? We will. We will choose today to build it on Jesus. Number two, we will be led by the Spirit. We will be led by the Spirit. See, we have to choose to be led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that Jesus has given us. And when we're led by the Spirit, we can lead our families by the Spirit. So no matter what flesh decisions we have, we can be led by the Spirit. See, I have a two-year-old, and if you have a toddler, you know, everything is led by the flesh. And sometimes when she's being led by the flesh, I am tempted and I mess up, and I lead myself by the flesh, because when she says, I don't like you, or, or no, I just, there's something in me that wants to come back at that. But if I want to be an example, if I want my foundation to be built on Jesus and build a healthy family for her to see the example that I'm leading and, and doing this, I have to be led by the Spirit. I have to choose to let the Holy Spirit lead me, not my flesh. And when I'm led by the Holy Spirit, my family can be led by the Holy Spirit. And I can make the decision today that we will be led by the Holy Spirit. My family, your family, we will be led. We will not be led by the world uh, or the news. We will be led by the Holy Spirit. And as a part of God's family, we get an opportunity to cultivate and develop God's characteristics in our family. See, once we're a part of God's family, like I talked about, we belong to God. And now we get to cultivate how we belong to God and bring that to our family. Look what Galatians 5, 22, 23 says. I love this verse. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And I love that he says this because this is what the Holy Spirit produces. Jesus said, if you are not connected to me, you cannot bear any fruit. So I'm just trying to, to get to in your spirit today that if you want to have this fruit in your family and in your life, if you want to build this healthy family, we must be connected to Jesus. We must build our foundation on Jesus and then start to be led by his spirit. And then we produce these things and then it overflows into our family. Do you see what I'm saying here? And then our families start to have love, Peace, joy, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control starts to come in our family and we start living by the Spirit. See, this is how we build that healthy family. It starts with us. It starts with making a decision that we will be led by the Holy Spirit. Number three is we will serve each other. If we want to build this foundation on Jesus, we have to make these decisions. We will serve each other. We will be a family that serves each other. See, when our family is in need, we must serve and provide. See, the hardest thing to do is to love our family, especially family members who have hurt us who, or, or have said things about us. And maybe it's not just your family in your house, but maybe it's other family. But if we want to be, if we want to build a healthy family and build it on Jesus, we have to serve. This is not just in family. This can be anything, but I'm relating it to family today. We must serve each other. I need to serve my wife. She serves me. I serve my daughter. I serve my other family. And it gets, I gets outside of myself and I say, I'm going to serve my family. Because my family deserves to be served. Because I don't get to choose them. Yeah, they're crazy. But I'm gonna, I get to choose to serve them. See, our job is to bring peace to our families. Our job is to serve our families. And sometimes our families are the hardest people to serve, but we have to make a decision today if it's built on Jesus. Jesus say, I didn't come uh, to be served. I came to serve. That was his example. So if that's true, we have to serve our families. Look what 1 Timothy 5.8 says this. Timothy says this, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This is intense. Uh, Timothy was talking about the widows and he was talking about if you have a widow in your family, you don't serve them. But I think he was trying, he used that example, but he's trying to get it across to everyone about serving. If we don't serve and especially don't provide for our own household, when they're in need, when they're in strength, we're worse than an unbeliever. It's like saying, I believe in Jesus, but my, my family's struggling, but I'm unwilling to let them come into my house if they've lost their job. Or I'm unwilling to uh, give them money, or I'm unwilling to show them love. I'm unwilling to do these things. And Timothy's saying, if we want to lead by example in our families, if we want to build it on Jesus, we have to serve them. How can you serve your family this week? Maybe it's a phone call and just a word of encouragement. That family doesn't live in your house. Maybe it's just, I know the house has been crazy, but it's instead of saying, what can I get from my family? Or they just need to be quiet and go over there. And, or they just need to leave me alone. I'm tired of them. How can I serve them? Because when we serve like Jesus served, that is when we build a foundation on him. We show our family that it's not about us. It's about them. We provide for them. See, Proverbs eleven twenty nine 29 says this. It's very plain here, and I love this. Those who bring trouble on their families inherit the wind. The fool will be a servant to the wise. Basically what it's saying, the writer is saying, those who bring trouble, those who are unwilling to serve, those who are causing drama in their family, inherits the wind, which is nothing but those who serve their family, who are willing to serve them will inherit not just things here on earth, but things in heaven. We will serve the Lord and we will serve our family and lead by example. And the last thing is this, we will keep walking by faith. How we build our foundation on Jesus and we live by example and how we show this, how, how, how we water these seeds that God has placed us in, how we love our family. We do this by walking by faith. We've talked about faith in the last couple of weeks, but I, see, I think the same is true with our families. If we want to be that example, we want to build our foundation on Jesus. If we want to make that our priority, we have to walk by faith. And even when the times are tough, we have to keep walking by faith. Even when I'm struggling, we have to keep saying, this is our foundation, family. And no matter what's happening in the world, we will, this family will walk by faith. 
I will not give up my faith. I will not waver my faith. We will walk by faith. And we have to make a decision today, one named church, that our families will walk by faith. Our family's foundation will be in Jesus. And we will choose no matter what is happening around us, that our family is our priority. It's our number one ministry. It's what God has placed us in. And it doesn't matter if anyone else hears uh, or sees uh, Jesus through us. It, you know, if we're always worried about everyone else, but not worried about our family, we're missing it out. We're not living where God has called us. We need to be planted and build our foundation on Jesus to our families and then go. And when I started this church, I, I made a, a commitment that I'm going to serve God with all of my life. I'm going to, Leave everything behind me and serve God, but I'm not going to lose my family in the process because my family is my priority. And my daughter will not remember some, if, you know, how great a message I preach or if, as you see, she doesn't listen to anything I say. She's not going to remember all of these things, but she will remember when I come home and I show her love. She will remember when I come home and I play with her. She will remember how I walk by faith when times get tough. And if we want to be an example to our family, if we want to show them Jesus and say, this is our foundation, we have to walk by faith. Because when our family is lost and they're struggling with hope and they're struggling, we must believe. We must have faith. Acts 16, 31, I love this verse. It says this in Acts 16, 31, it says, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. This was when Paul was in jail and he's talking to the prison guard. And he says this, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved along with everyone in your household. I believe we fight for our families with our faith. I believe we build our foundation on Jesus by walking out our faith every day because our family is watching us. Our family is looking towards us. And if we say with our mouth, we believe, but we act a different way, our family is gonna, they see our every move, our every, if they live in the house, they know. They're gonna spot it out like that's not true faith. But it starts with us saying we will serve the Lord. It starts with us saying, this is not an option here. And I will start with being the example, whatever role I have in my family, and I will serve the Lord. I will walk by faith and I will choose no matter what is happening around me, that this is what we will do as a family. And this is how I'll lead by example. So I wanna encourage you today in a season where the enemy is coming to divide our families and he's trying to take out families because if you have a broken family, you have broken people. And when you have broken people, you have a broken world. And it starts in the house. It starts, that is the first place. That is our, our first job besides serving God. That is the place where we need to give the most effort. And when we give the most effort and build our foundation on Jesus and our family, that is when the world is changed because we build healthy families, we make that our priority, and then we build healthy churches, healthy people, healthy organizations, and we start to have a healthy world and the world starts to change. So I wanna encourage you today, wherever you find yourself at in your family, if you're the leader, if you're a family member, serve the Lord. Make a decision today to say, we will serve the Lord. My family will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. And when I do, that will be an example for all families. So I just wanna pray for you today. And wherever you're at, wherever family you're going through, maybe you're going through a family situation. Every time as a pastor I ask for prayer requests, it's about families and, and my heart's for families. And I just wanna pray that the spirit of God will come into your family and you will make it your priority to show them Jesus and to build your foundation on Jesus. So let's pray. God, I come to you right now and I thank you that we're a part of your family. I thank you that 
you have made us a part. We're not foreigners, we're not strangers, we're a part of your household, God. So we pray today that you give us the strength to lead our families like you, to lead by the Spirit, to serve you with all of, all of we have and just to walk by faith in everything we do. Help us be that example for our families, Jesus. And I pray for every family situation, whatever is going on, that you're in there, God, that you give peace and they continue to trust you in this season. We thank you for our families and we pray for them, protect our families and help us win this fight for our families in this season. In Jesus name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us right now and hearing all about uh, my heart on families. Family is our priority here, and we're just so excited to partner with you. We love you guys. If you have, if you have any want any information on the church, just fill out the connect card and make sure you guys contact us. We love you guys. Have a great day. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born.